Michael Richards, great guy. Oh yeah? Yeah, oh, and you yeah? know how some actors are very hot-headed and get themselves into trouble? Like yeah, scandals no! and stuff? That <laughs> oh, is no! never gonna be a problem for this guy. No! Hey guys, my name's Dan, and this reaction is Seinfeld Pitch Meeting Revisited. Now, I was definitely way too young when Seinfeld was originally on the air, but over the past couple of years, I definitely grown to appreciate it quite a bit. I am curious to see, though, uh, what sort of jokes he makes for this, because he normally doesn't do comedies. He's even said that he normally just doesn't do comedies. But I'm sure there's plenty there that he could probably... Uh, make jokes of or or he already did make jokes of and then we could sort of see like what else he would have done because now he's been doing that thing where he goes over the the past script and he adds some things takes some things out so very curious to see what this is because i'm sure it's going to be a lot of fun but before we get into it though please do check all those links i have for you down in the description below more specifically the pitch meeting link and his personal channel they're both great ways to support him and a great and easy way to support me is to go right below this video click all those buttons down there because also let's just see future reactions that i do but also my channel to grow and without any further ado let's go hello this is ryan george from the thing you're currently watching hello, please enjoy this pitch meeting for seinfeld that i made several years ago and then stick around after because i will discuss it while you're doing Yay. that i'm gonna draw the soup nazi ah the soup nazi so you have a show for me yeah so it's a sitcom created by a comedian named jerry seinfeld what's his comedy like oh it's great he'll be on stage like what is the deal with what? airline phone uh. okay yeah and then sometimes he's like what is the deal with other stuff. I guess that sounds relatable. Yeah, and then other times he's like, what is the deal? Okay, 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 you can stop <laughs> yeah, doing we get it, now. we get oh, the yeah, intro. Sure. That's not what he sounds like, is it? Kind of. Yeesh. Also, he's not the best <laughs> actor in the world, so he's probably gonna be on the verge of laughing all the time. Oh, or at the very least smiling all the time, no matter what the situation is. Okay, well maybe people won't mind all that. So the show's gonna follow a fictional version of Jerry and basically show how a comedian comes up with material. Interesting, so we're gonna see his everyday life with his friends and stuff. Yeah, it'll be him and his three friends that are also, you know, high functioning sociopaths. Wait, what? <laughs> he has three friends. Yeah, but Jerry and his friends are- High functioning sociopaths. High functioning sociopaths? Oh yeah, none of the main characters have any sense of moral responsibility <laughs> or social conscience whatsoever. Wow, so they're holes. Oh yeah. Oh. So tell me more about the other sociopaths. Well, one of them is named George. What's his deal? He's short, stocky, and bald, and instead of speaking, he's just gonna scream every line and kind of flail his arms around. Got it. Then there's Elaine, who used to date Jerry and is a terrible dancer. Great. Then there's Kramer. And what's he like? Oh, he's great. Of the high functioning sociopaths, he's the least high functioning. Interesting. Yes. Yeah, and he's gonna do this thing where he opens doors really fast. Oh. Yeah, and that'll yeah, kind of be what? his thing. I'll be honest, I don't get that. He's gonna open the door in a funny way. Okay. If you get the right actor, I'm sure it'll play. All right. So what kind of situations are these characters gonna get themselves into? Uh, some pretty funny ones, and this stuff's gonna be relatable forever. Oh, that's good, because sometimes after a couple of years, storylines from sitcoms don't hold up anymore. That is not gonna be a problem here. This stuff is never gonna feel dated. So what kind of situations oh are we talking? You know, like when you need to call somebody, but somebody's using the payphone? Ugh, I hate ah. that. Or like when you're supposed to meet up with someone, but you can't find them, and you're like, what am I supposed to do now? That is always going to be a problem. Yeah, yeah totally. unless somebody invents a way to send like an instant message or something. Yeah, yeah right, I mean, maybe in a hundred mm. years or so. Also, we'll talk about how rude it is to use a cell phone to call somebody. So rude. That's yeah. never gonna be an okay thing to do. Mm -hmm. It's very selfish. It's mm -hmm. gross is what it is. Agreed. Yeah, So what kind very of gross. humor would you say the show okay. has? Well, I'd say very much like Seinfeld stand-up. So he'll make observations and stuff? Exactly, like maybe they'll be at the post office and he'll be like, why is there always a line at the post office? Hmm. Okay, what's wrong? Well, they don't sound like jokes. They sound like observations. Yeah. Well, isn't it yeah. gonna be hard to get viewers at home to laugh at observations? No, actually super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Yeah, what do you mean? Actually. Well, I figure we can lean like really heavy into the laugh track. Oh, okay. Yeah, like if the studio audience can lose their minds between every sentence, that'd be great. We can arrange that. Then while that's mm -hmm. happening, we can have the characters stand there and just look at each other like, and that's gonna work. Oh, for yep. sure, it's gonna take like mundane conversations and turn them into hilarious moments. You have an example? Sure, so this is between Elaine and Jerry after Elaine went on a date and the okay. guy took his wiener out. Go for it. He took it out. He what? He took it out. He took what out? It. He took it out? Yes, sirree, Bob. And viewers at home will think that's funny. <laughs> they will if there's a laugh track between every single sentence. Fascinating. And so ah, that's about so it. I just have these four 
potholes running around New York City and getting into trouble. Sounds good to me. Great. And you know what? I think I have a person in mind for that Kramer character. Oh, Who's no. that? Yeah, this actor named Michael Richards. Great guy. Oh, yeah? Yeah, oh, and you yeah? know how some actors are very hot-headed and get themselves into trouble? Like yeah, scandals no. and stuff? That <laughs> oh, is no. never going to be a problem for this guy. No! No! Oh, God. And I, I am surprised, though, because there was one episode of Seinfeld where he was trying to actually pitch his own show it, it was him and and georgia that were that were pitching this show i'm surprised they didn't reference that though there are a lot of episodes of seinfeld so it's not i guess not too surprising there you have it that soup cannot see ah! thank you thank you so much thank you good Very job much. Yeah. We're in a hat today because I didn't put the stuff in my hair and do the I got a newborn baby at home. I got to make choices like that to sure. save time. The sacrifices sure. you make for your children is beautiful. So I figured I'd revisit this pitch meeting because Jerry Seinfeld has has reintroduced himself into the world because he made a Pop-Tart movie, a movie about Pop-Tarts. And then he went on a press tour talking about how you you can't be funny anymore, which is, I guess, why he made the Pop-Tarts movie. Oh, Jerry's bird. very upset about woke culture not letting you do things you used to be able to do, like publicly dating a 17-year-old oh. when you're a famous 38-year-old comedian, oh. stuff like that. He's right. Woke culture probably wouldn't let you make a Pop-Tart yeah, no. movie or a B movie if you did that kind of yeah. thing today. Crazy times we live in, it's really, it's yeah, quite it's, something. So anyway, crazy. so this was the 13th pitch meeting I ever made, oh. and I honestly, I don't think that was super good. If you enjoyed that, thank you, but I... I did? Nah, 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 nah. Rewatching that, here's what I think happened. I don't think I really did much research at all, which is usually where I spend a ton of time. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's why... Maybe he didn't cover that episode. For TV shows are more work because it's obviously a lot more to watch and a lot more to research. But with modern TV shows, usually being like eight episodes, it's it's doable. Seinfeld ran for like 180 episodes. So there was no way I was going to rewatch all yeah, that. Yeah, throughout like the entire 90s. It was pretty crazy. But in retrospect, I probably should have watched a couple. I think pretty much this whole video was based on my recollection of Seinfeld from when I saw it in the 90s when I was a child. It was probably a middle ground to find. I probably could have watched a couple. And I should have done more digging on the internet. This feels too general. Like several people pointed out in the comment section of this pitch meeting, they actually pitched Seinfeld in yes! Seinfeld. How did yes! I not do something meta yes! with that? How did I not reference the B movie, the soup Nazi, or the shrinkage, yes! or any yes! of the famous lines? I spent a minute of this pitch meeting talking about the overuse of laugh track on the show. If I was making this pitch meeting today, that would have been a lot shorter, and I also probably would have tried to do more of a show don't tell kind of thing. Where in order to convince the producer guy that this is a doable thing, the screenwriter guy would have brought a laugh track with him and, and then everything he said would have been funny. Would have made producer guy laugh in a giggly way. I also think I probably would have done a rapid fire back and forth of just as many poorly aged things as I could find. With the two characters confidently thinking that they would not age poorly. So sure. yeah, not my favorite pitch meaning, but people have done worse things, so I'll let myself off. Oh no, yeah! Now, for the rewriting <laughs> portion of these revisited things, people have been generally enjoying those it seems like just judging by the comment section and I promise I'll get back into that for the next revisited it's okay. just again I have a newborn baby at home here's a stock photo of a baby as proof and the ironic it's thing fine. about the rewriting portion is that in these videos the revisit videos which originally I'm making so that I can spend more time on other projects writing takes a lot of time despite how quickly edited they are so I'm giving myself a no. week off of the rewriting section okay. of the revisited thing so that I can take <laughs> Take care of this stock photo baby. Yeah, take we'll care of that stock when my life photo. gets a tiny little bit easier. I hope that's okay. It'll and be you're not years before that happens. And here is question time. What was it like to work with the peeps over at Hishya? Your cameo in their video from Adam Webb was awesome, and I'd love to hear how that came about. So for those who don't know, Hishya is how it should have ended, which is a really great channel that also does stuff on movies. Oh, so yeah, YouTube wonderful. Legends, they've been around for a long time. And if you didn't see it, they included me in their Madam Webb video, which I, I'll link yet. in the description. I was absolutely honored that they reached out. I'm a big fan of what they do. And in terms of Same. working together, it was really super 
easy. I was about to say super simple. I don't know why I thought that would be an okay thing to do. They reached out to me and they're like, hey, we have a bit where we'd like to do the pitch meaning thing in our Madam Web video. Would you be interested? Is that okay? And they're also like, the video's going up in a couple of days, so let us know if it's possible. And that really impressed me because animation is time consuming. The fact sure that is. a couple of days before release, they're still getting voices, crazy. These people work fast, very, very impressive. Hey Ryan, very kind words. Have you ever thought about doing a pitch meeting entirely in French? I think it would be a funny April Fool's prank or something to do like a classic French movie pitch meeting entirely in French. I think that for me to do a French pitch meeting and for it to not tank, there would have to be some kind of worldwide phenomenon French movie, kind of sure. like when I did RRR, you know? YouTube algorithm is a scary and delicate thing and you don't want to mess sure with is. it too much. So the ball's in your court, uh, Paris cinema or Quebec cinema. I mean, we make things here too. Maybe something will strike a chord. Hi Ryan, kind Hi. words. What's your favorite food? Warmest of Canadian goodbyes from the caribou region. Stereotypically, I do love a good poutine, but blasphemously, I like to put weird stuff on it like ketchup, or there's places oh. that make like general Tao poutine, that's really good. But beyond mm. that, my absolute favorite food is probably just like a good club sandwich. Très <laughs> bon, délicieux. Hey Ryan, great videos. Quick question, so like, what's up? Uh... Not much. Okay, thanks for watching. Please <laughs> Not send me much. more just, questions. Just the baby. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I totally get that. I don't have any kids of my own, but like, I, I, I have a dog who's basically kind of like a kid. Especially, uh, you know, he as he gets older, he needs more care and all that. So I, I, I certainly do understand and appreciate uh, his time and his effort that he puts into these videos, even though he has a kid now. Um, I, I do not blame him for wanting to take any sort of time off whatsoever. He's probably going to need to take a lot of time off, honestly, because uh, I, I have nephews and I know they're a lot of work, so... Brian, go do your thing, man. Go do your thing. I am surprised, though, that he didn't do a lot of research about this at the time, you know, before he had a kid. So the, there would have been so many other jokes, again, about the soup Nazi, about this, about that, about that, you know, that, about that episode that I was talking about. Well, I mean, I think there was, like, more than one dedicated towards it. But I think that would have been a funny little thing to add into that pitch meeting, considering, you know, pitching the show and pitching the show within the show and he could have went off on that and went a whole tangent with it i think that could have been a lot of fun as well but it was still enjoyable i know he didn't like it but i honestly like it doesn't really take too much to make me laugh giggle a lot at different things sometimes at things that i probably shouldn't be giggling at but for the most part it you know everything about mo most of the stuff about seinfeld i enjoyed and most of the stuff about this video I enjoyed. So, that's gonna do it for me here. Comment down below. Let me know what did you think about this revisit. Please leave a like if you enjoyed. Please check out all those links I have for you down in the description below. Then lastly and most importantly, I want to give a huge shout out to all my $5 and up supporters on Patreon. Cruising, Wolverine 310, GB, and Kester Cronin, Joseph McSweeney, Amber K, Raymond Bright, Joshi, Chris Curtis, Haley Machinardi, Ann Perry, Larka, Boss Cophony, Morgan Page, Misa, Misa 2, Lily the Snoopy Fan, Lauren, Jenny the Swifty, Flea Street Vicom, Christopher Banyard, Steffi, Travis Knops, Sarah Long, Summer the Dog Lover, Scott, Misa 3, and Andrew of the Voo. And if you too like to have a shout out and then each and every one of my videos, please head over to patreon.com slash the damn reactor for more. And I'll see you guys next time.